language. Uh, so it's kind of like, it says unofficial. Yeah. It's live footage, and I thought it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's a buddy of ours, um, Andrew Riley, who went, actually went to South by with us, and that was the first time we really hung out with him for an extended period of time. He just kind of fell into the background of the band, like, all day long, every day, just taking pictures. It's really easy, comfortable dude to be around. And so, when we started the residency, he came along for the first week or two. Week, I can't remember. Yeah, he came along for a week. Yeah. We didn't just, even know he was. He was just shooting video of yeah, everything. Uh -huh. And then he's like, "Hey, check out this video I made." And I'm like, "This is, this is awesome." Yeah. Like, we didn't even know he was going to edit anything yeah. together. But it came out really cool. Yeah. And then I, your website now has like a new, a new song that wasn't on the video. Yeah. Right. We're writing for the next one. That one's not going to be on the next one. Um, so that's like an exclusive, go get it from the website yeah, right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was something that we were messing around with for the, the last one. The one that we're recording right now. And um, yeah, it just kind of felt like a good time to put something else out there. Kind of by complete coincidence sort of lined up with the whole Rapture weekend. Or <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah, so it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, it's, it just felt like time to put a little something new out there or whatever, so. Um, when you were recording that last record, what was, where did you go and what was the process? Like, did you have a theme that you were trying to hit, or was it? Um, you know, the first part of that? Uh, we had songs, I mean, we had to choose what songs we wanted to actually record. Mm -hmm. um, we just went out there. We went to Sound City in Los Angeles. Um, actually, Ben and I is California. And uh, yeah, we recorded like 14 songs or so in like nine days. And basically, at the end, just picked 10 that we wanted for the record. And it was pretty intense. 14 songs in nine days. That's yeah. Kind of yeah. Well, it was, yeah, it was a lot of like prep work for that, for sure. Yeah. And we were, our bass player recently just um, quit the band. so. Just us before, three. Yeah, before, before, we we did did before we did the record. Yeah. Okay. The uh, as far as the theme, I mean, I think we knew a vibe that we wanted over overall, mm -hmm. and had done a lot of work on the songs before we went out there. So we, I think we had a pretty good idea of what the record we wanted it to come across like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I definitely like high energy sort of lots of rock and roll kind of stuff, but yeah, I think lyrically kind of a lot heavier than any of the stuff we've put out before. Who was your like, musical influences if you, were, if you were forced to say? Um, quite a smarter. Yeah, I mean, you have to think. I mean, I love, love Led Zeppelin and Big Star, but like all the whole like stack soul stuff. More like songwriter songwriter kind of people and you know, Rin and Bob Dylan. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that stuff comes out. It's, it's, you guys don't, you're definitely not a cookie cutter band by any stretch of imagination. So it, it would stand to reason that your influences are probably different than most as well. Yeah. Yeah. Logo yeah. Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's what also like you're kind of, <laughs> how, you, how you process your influences too. Uh, there's definitely some mixed up stuff going on. From yeah, like three or four different bands, distinct parts of those bands all formed into one song. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, I've never been one of those guys that goes out and typically, you know, like to play, learn to play. I didn't learn a lot of people's songs because I just I mess it up. Like I can't. Like I, I process people's songs. And I'm like, hey, look, I learned it, and then you know, everybody's like, that's not that song at all. <laughs> so. I think even processing those influences and, and writing songs, like, I think I'm writing a song that feels like this, and everyone kind of hears it totally different than I do. Well, that's kind of cool, though. It makes you, it makes you like, more unique, like, that you don't just hear something, and then, like, try to repeat it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think lack of skill has forbidden me from replicating uh, 
most people's uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, I read this quote that you said, I feel like we get a vision of America that other people don't, one that only other traveling bands have. We don't just play New York or what the industry calls A markets, we play F markets as well. So in, in traveling all over the place and seeing like the F market areas, have you seen stuff that's like inspired you or stuff that you're like, oh, I wish this would change? For like this would change as far as what we're doing, or like America, either, either what you're doing, or like what's going on. Yeah. Um, I like that stuff more. You know, like as far as just personally traveling, you know, I I'm more the where's the crappiest restaurant in town, or you know, <laughs> like the darkest, weirdest version of what do you got? I want to go there. But so I mean, I definitely think we find that stuff to be inspiring. Part of the appeal of touring, um, even to the extent like we, for the first three years of touring, exclusively stayed on people's floors. Like probably in the first three years of touring, bought two hotel rooms. And you know, the more you tour, the more you're out there. It kind of gets exhausting to find a place to stay every night. You know, and then every night, most people when you go home are wanting to hang out, and talk to you, and party, or whatever. And you're, so a lot of times you're just ready to go to sleep. Yeah. So. I miss that part about touring because at this point we're staying in hotels a lot more. So the sort of intense relationships we would establish with people <laughs> have, have um, become less frequent. Yeah. Well, it's cool. The smaller markets, I think, sometimes they get more psyched about shows. Like I think there's less pretense, they're more ready to uh, just kind of come out and get rowdy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes you play the bigger markets like New York and, you know, like, you know, or, you know like Atlanta or Atlanta and DC and stuff. There's a certain element. Cross, like you know, not really, you know, giving giving anything back. But you know, I think there's less of that in the smaller markets sometimes. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yes. you get less. Uh, you get a more insular thing too, or where, where you know a town will have its own personality rather than New York, Philly, DC, whatever. Those are different places, but the cool culture there is pretty. Fun. Franchise, you know, it's, it's all the cool kids look the same and act the same, or whatever. Across cities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. pretty typical lifestyle in any of the larger cities. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's fun to it's fun to dig dig into the subcultures that kind of only exist when there's not that big. Yeah. Pop culture influence. I think that's that's not in this area. Yeah.
We had to break ten thousand. No, thank you. We were, uh, yeah, we're really lucky that we got the brakes checked when we got to wherever we were. I can't remember. We got the brakes checked eventually, like in uh, Seattle. Yeah, no, Portland, Portland. Portland. And they're like blow both calipers. Yeah, and they're like these things are done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just go off the backside of this mountain, and it's just straight down <laughs> for about ten miles, and you can't. Every time you take your foot off the brake, it's like you're just going up ten miles an hour. So it's like you're just fighting momentum the entire time. Yeah, it breaks. There's only two, you can only downshift to like second gear, so it's either drive down the mountain going ten miles an hour, or just ride the brake. <laughs> yeah, so blow out the brake, blow out the transmission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We have a new Dodge Sprinter now. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Much bigger. You should paint something like. We've got to put a church decal. We've been talking yeah. about it. Yeah. The cops are way nicer to do with a church decal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Yeah. Even when they know you're, even if you do get pulled over and they realize you're not from a church, just being in the church van. They feel like God's, they feel like God's watching. Yeah. yeah. So, we got pulled over. What? Twice or one, maybe one time in the church van in like five years, and then we've already gotten tickets. Yeah, really cool. Like three times. four times or something like that. Yeah. In Springer, we First only had it since yeah. March. The, I wouldn't so. think that the Dodge Sprinter is something that they like peg to pull over. It's so big, it's, it's an obnoxious not thing big. to be on the road. Yeah. It's like a, a sea of, I don't know, Chevy Luminous or something on the highway, and then you just see this giant blue blob. Yeah, we got the extended well, height and the extended length. So on the inside, when you stand, it's six feet from the floor to the top. So uh, all the wheels, I mean, I think it's probably nine and a half feet, yeah. maybe over ten feet tall. And it's like you know, 25 feet tall, 30 yeah. feet tall. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just like, they hate it. it's something that Yeah, they literally hate it. It's something I'm next to. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do to this? You're definitely checking clearance things when you go for uh, the No, not anymore. Sometimes. <laughs> I still don't know how tall that thing is, so sometimes I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, it's at least uh, nine feet. Yeah. Here, here, here. It's ridiculous. Um, so what's what's next for you guys? You're going to Bonnaroo, and then um, you have another couple of festivals to hit up. When are you going to the studio to report soon? Or? Um, we're taking some time off at the end of the summer, and then we've got November and December blocked out for either more writing if that's what needs to happen or starting to record. So kind of just depending on when the songs are done. So, you write up, you work on stuff on the road while you're traveling? Mm, no. I come up with bits and pieces, but I'm not, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard. I don't really have time for the piano to sit down and mess with stuff. Yeah. 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 We write off the road and we kind of get it in shape.